Oh, good. We're all set. Uh, my acrobat was wanting me to update it right when I started, so thank you, Emer, for the loan of your laptop. Um, so this is one of my favorite things to do, is to uh, help people figure out what's going on on their websites. But before we do that, I want to teach you a little bit about what's important. So let's see how to do this. Okay, this way. Yeah, so will it, well, I'm on her website. I mean, her, this, this I can scroll. Um, so the biggest question is that we have to ask, it's like not enough to have a pretty website or technically proficient website, but is your website working for your business? Ought to be your biggest concern. And surprisingly, and maybe it is that people assume that it will be if it's pretty or if they like it, or, but it's not necessarily true. And it takes really having that be the biggest question that you want to know. And if it's not working effectively, then why not? And there's great ways of finding out why not. Um, So if you're worried that people are whispering behind your backs because a lot of times they won't tell you that your website just sucks. <laughs> now, Google will tell you. Google will tell you. I just wrote a blog post um, the other day about five things Google can tell you about your website because I work with, a, I work with businesses of a, a lot of different size businesses, but I have a sweet spot. I love working with small businesses and I just was talking to a woman that we did her hair salons and um, she said she's getting tons of business from her new website. She's got two locations. I said, well, what's your traffic like? She said, I can, I can find out. <laughs> I'm like, yes, we set up Google Analytics for you and blah, blah, blah. So we went in and we, you know, but that prompted me, which often those kinds of things do, to write a blog post about, you know, not like total analytics and it, Google Analytics is, it has a lot of parts and pieces, but if you know five questions that you can find out about it, and so, you know, we, I wrote that, and one of them is if you go to your website, um, if, if, how many people are going to your website, first of all, that's a good number to know, and making sure that if you have 100 people, but you have uh, 30 of them are from Russia, no offense to any Russians, they're probably spam. So, you know, you can filter those out so that you're not assuming that you're seeing more people than, you know, more people are seeing your website. And then you say, of those 100 people that are on my website, well, what is the amount, how long are they staying on the front page? And how you can tell that is there's a little thing that tells you time on site, time on the page. And another thing, and so if they're coming to the page, your home page, and leaving after, five seconds, 30 seconds, then, you know, something's not right. Either you're attracting, they're thinking that they're, I have a web, uh, I have a, a bed and breakfast as well called the Urban Oasis, and we get people finding the Urban Oasis, at least they call me thinking that we're the nightclub out in the suburbs. <laughs> and I know, and we don't give a massage with our <laughs> overnight stays. Um, so. Either they're coming to your website because they're just not your people, those are not my people, or they are coming to your website, they are your people, and they're taking one look and going, ah, and leaving. And then you can tell how long, that, like whether they're going to other pages. So if somebody's coming, we just did a site for Wild Alaska Seafood, I mean Salmon and Seafood Company, and they're, sta they're going to the site, they're staying on the front page for two and a half minutes, and then going to three and a, three and a half pages while they're on that visit. And we can see how many people are purchasing, which we know, but how many people are abandoning the cart, and then those things, and people are abandoning the cart, and they're telling us it's because the shipping's too high. And I told him to have free shipping on, you know, on the products, and now he's taking my advice because Google points it out. So Google can be really helpful in telling you what you don't want to know and what you do want to know. And so, you know, if you're frustrated about this, get some help because sometimes you're too close to it. 
and you can't tell, whoops, so I went backwards, you can't tell what, um, what your um, problem is. You know, you just don't see it, and we'll see that when we look at some of these websites in a minute. So, first of all, you have to have a design that's pleasing. You know, there's, it, it has to feel congruent with whatever your business is. And some people are doing their own websites, more power to you. But if you can't design your way out of a, color, a paper bag, then get some help. Because it doesn't help to have that website if it's driving people away when they go to the home page because there are 14 colors on it. Or um, You have to have an attention-getting hero image or some kind of image that subliminally even makes you feel like you've arrived at the right place. Sliders, no, 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 no. It's so hard to find that epic hero image, one epic hero image, unless you're Wild Alaska Salmon and Seafood. They had amazing photos of Alaska and stuff. But even then, of those amazing photos, it had to be one that showed the ship with him in it, you know, their fishing boat with the fish on it. You know, there was only one of those. Could we have put like 16 of their fabulous p photos rotating? Yeah, but people really don't want to see 16. They want to see your best shot because they don't want to sit around on your homepage waiting for those other shots to come along. So give them your best shot. And sliders reduce the performance. And there's some, some uh, site reviews I've done. There's so many things sliding on that site that you can't even, it makes you have an epileptic seizure. Font size co and color. Readable. I know my son who works with me, Michael, loves the light gray text. It's so snazzy and understated. But damn, you're, people are looking at their computers, and you don't want them to have to get up like that to read your writing. So, yeah, may mess up the design. I have to admit, you know, some of them look better with a little lighter, but I want to be able to have the computer right here and see what it says without having to strain. And that is not 12 points. That's uh, more like um, 16 or 18. The, the font on our, our site, which we had major battles about that, is now like uh, a dark gray and it's 18 pixels, 18 point font. So that's, um, that's big. But it's readable because I write things that I want people to read. I mean, some people put stuff on their website and they're not expecting anybody to read it because it is boring and full of jargon and it's long walls of text. I think I might have one of those uh, slides on here. Well, no, it pr might come. But anyway, nobody's going to read that. And if it bores you to read it, my gosh, it's going to bore your visitors. And so um, you have to really tell your story. You know, you have to own your story and tell your story on that home page in a way that somebody says, whoa, they're different than everybody else. You know, because, you know, chances are you do something that there's more than one person do doing and so why, why would I want to work with you? And, and if it's a small business, it's important to, like some small businesses, try to act like bigger businesses. We do this, we do that, and it's just, it's just a person. If you're just a person, be that person. Because some people would prefer to work with a person than with a we. And so you're losing an opportunity to really introduce yourself and make yourself, have, have somebody have an experience of you that's as if you were doing a sales call in person. So if you can close business in person, why can't you do it on the web? Mostly because you're hiding out. You're not being honest. You're not leading with your strong suit. And you're not, you're, oh, I don't want to be on the front page. I don't want to talk about me. It's all about them. Well, it is. It is about them. Because you don't want to start off your website talking all about yourself. You have to get their attention so they know what you can do for them. But it's like, who, the next step is, who can do that for me? And why should I care? And you want them, you know, you're not going to resonate with everybody, 
But what you say is going to bring in those people that like your quirky sense of humor or like your, you know, like something about you. Um, Jason Swank has a cat in his video on the front page of his website. Is he in here? I haven't seen him yet. But um, in the dating sites, one of the research that Tim Ferriss did was that men with pictures of men with cats get the highest amounts of um, likes. So any of you single gals out there or guys who want to attract the women, get a cat or borrow a cat. But Jason must have read that and put a darn cat, and he's holding the cat for dear life, and you know the cat wants to get away. But it's funny, and you see what it would be like to work with him. You know it wouldn't be like going to some uh, you know, anonymous place and doing some kind of like buttoned up work. He's going to be that same person. You know it. And if that's appealing to you and you like cats, you might consider working with him. So you have to figure out what your story is and, how the, and the story of your business and how to tell it in, in quick. And you have to show it, not tell it. So the telling, what I mean, is the story. But you've seen the sites that say, we do this, we do that, and we've been number one, and we've been well, you do have to have social proof, and you have to have that kind of stuff somewhere on your site. But don't lead with it. You have to put the things on your website so that people, you don't have to tell them. They can see that you do great work. They can see from how your site is done that what you do um, and who you are. Because that's how it works in this year, 2016. We're done with people bragging about, you know, that kind of old school uh, marketing and it's more about authenticity and it's more about your ratings on Google, um, you know, Google local listings and what do other people say about you and, and what do you say about yourself really in your story, how transparent you are. Another thing that you see, or I see, you see it too, but you might not notice it, are <laughs> There are no calls to action. You know, sometimes people don't even make it clear what business that they, how, like, what business that they're in, or if they're in a business or they have a website, how you would work with them. Unless, uh, I just did a website for my sister and those of you that were in the beginners, beginners session yesterday saw it. And I said to her, you know, you're doing this work, but people won't come up and want to do beekeeping with you unless you have something on your website that says, oh, here are three levels of service that you can do beekeeping with me, because then they feel comfortable talking to you because you have something predefined. We're going to meet, you know, once in person and get your bees. We're going to do, 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 and that package is such and such, and, and so forth. They're more comfortable then reaching out and saying, I'm interested in that. I don't know which package, but I want you to help me with my bees. Um, but if you don't have any calls to action or you don't tell them what you do, what you specifically can do, they're too weirded out to call you and just get into an open-ended session and say, well, you know, how much is that going to cost? And it's all awkward. So that was kind of more than one. But lead generation and um, being able to capture their emails and because they're not ready to work with you right this minute. It might be 11 o'clock at night and they're, you're a therapist and they ha had a fight with their husband and somebody called, you know, they want to find a therapist, but the next day things are looking better. So they don't call, oh, well, it's 11 o'clock at night and you don't have a contact form. And you might have a contact form, but they're not ready to contact you. So they, you get their email and then send them something once a week or once a month or something so that when the next time they have that fight, they're, oh, you know, Dr. So-and-so, there's her email with all this good advice. I feel like I know her now. <sighs> Dr. So-and-so, I need some help. But it might be weeks down the road or even a year down the road. But you have to give them, you, nobody will remember to go back to your site, by the way. They just won't. Even my relative sites. I don't remember. And so I say, unless you send me an email and tell me you've got new content or something, in other words, a newsletter, something that just brings you back to the site, you, your traffic will be terrible. You have to reach out and let people know what you're writing about and that 
and then if they invite you into their inbox, you have a, you have a, you have a, you know, it's a privilege and you have to take it seriously and write them something that's good, you know, something that's personal and helpful to them. And if you want to um, come up in a Google search for, on, uh, for Google local listings, uh, making sure that your business name and address is on your site and even better if it's on the footer and on every page. Um, make sure people know how to get to you. Okay, so now it's time for rapid fire website critiques. Okay, I should have a, uh, I'm just going to um, just reach in here and pull something out. Okay, here is Jacinta Cobb, who's, did I say it right? Yes. Okay, let me um, now find out how to get out of here. Oh, I know, you know what? When I was doing my website recently, um, I, I d did this last year and then I went to my meetup and I was doing our website and it was, I was nervous to present my site to my friends. I understand, I've been gentler since then. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see, let me get out of this. Let's see, HTTP. Oh, oops. Diamond point writing. Wait. <laughs> Writing.com. Okay, her business is called diamondpointwriting.com. And, um, all right. So, the first thing that comes to mind when I come here is this site is about writing, and I don't see any writing. You know, it's like kind of minimal. Um, and I also see point writing. <laughs> you know, your logo is tiny. Now, some people want, remember the days when you had your whole banner filled with your logo? That's not so good because of mobile and everything. But your, your logo is a t tough logo because it's got, it's got script in it. It's got that feather through it. And having a, a lot of the sites these days come with um, a space for you to upload a logo that's like 300 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall. And if you've got a stacked logo, 100 pixels tall, then it becomes very short. Or else you need to do some CSS to get this bar a little bit taller. But I'd say I, I really have no idea. Um, I see, um, get all the inside info. Click here to check out a list of the a la carte and the testimonials. But you have lost me because I come to the site and it doesn't look like you know how to do website writing because I don't see you telling your own story on the home page. You need a site that people will scroll to the cows come home these days. And I said you need to kind of catch their attention above the scroll, but you don't want to send them off the home page right away until you've because people don't like to go click, 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 and, um, and then go to a page with this much uh, writing about. They'd rather see if you're all about your services, then just show me your services. Um, you know, so I'd say you, you haven't sold yourself. You're, you're, you look very timid. This is the psychologist coming, coming through. <laughs> so I can't really say anything bad about you except this doesn't work. You know, you're not telling your story, and I bet you have one. So you need to, like, put on your you know, Supergirl shirt and, and claim your space. Tell your story. Make them know what's good about you. You know, when you work with me, I help you, you know, da-da-da. Do you need, you know, do you have uh, web problems? You can't do your blog posts? You don't need to. I can do it. 
you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, whatever your strong suit is, what you really want to do, I mean, don't say I'll do your blog post if that's what you hate, but lead with your strong suit and tell your story. And then I'm not even going to go further because actually on the homepage there's, uh, well, I'll just look. I'll just look. <laughs> okay, let me just say about this. So usability is that our eyes can take in about right about maybe a third of a screen like if you have about 300 pixels something in that um, level range we can see that really easily we can, when we're looking at a at a wide screen of text it makes you want to go uh, I don't want to do that so a tip is to put an image, either make, that's why sidebars are helpful on these interior pages because it automatically uh, reduces the amount of the writing column. And then even then, I always start my, um, my blog post or my pages with a photo on the um, left side that's about a third of the column because it helps you be able to get started reading. Let me go to the blog. I'll just show you what I mean, okay? Um, you can see my dark font. You can read it probably almost from there. I have a photo that's about a third of the column. And then I have the sidebar. And some people would say if you really want people to read your blog post, don't have a sidebar and just to put the the post in the center so it's not going all the way across but it's and you know there's a you know if I just had a blog maybe I'd do that and I want people to read my blog post but I send them out in my newsletter just a digital minute every Wednesday morning and you should sign up um, <laughs> but if you haven't if you've missed my post you can go back here and read them um, here's my five things to get started but that's that's kind of what a good amount of space and oh you can make more line space between the things you see how the the uh, there's line space and you see how I have a lot of paragraphs but they're not really paragraphs permission to forget grammar rules you can you know chunks text you can make up your own and because what you want is it to be easy to scan and to make somebody feel like they they can just kind of look it's like they don't have to be like you know looking at it like that okay that is um, that's my two sets for you Jacinta okay um, oh here's here's one that I actually I know this one but Oh dear. Your website address, uh, Doyena? Where are you? It's not on here. That's your e email address. Oh, okay, we'll see how usability. <laughs> that I was just like kind of I'm you know if I was trying to think about it if I had more time which I if, I, if you had written given it to me and I was really trying to get in touch with you I probably would have automatically thought oh well if her email extension is such and such that's going to be your website but um, and it's really a great idea to get people to look at your stuff in front of you and, and have them like then watch somebody try to do something now let's see bring this down here and get rid of the go back to her home page okay how, how do we get maximize the window yes um, F, where is that F? Where? 
top left. This one. Okay, got it. Um, so this is um, Doheny's Do Doheny's website, and I just saw it in the happiness bar. And I, what it can say is, I thought it was really attractive. Um, I, I really love her her logo. Very um, very easy to. I mean, her you know the the writing, the home illumination design shop inspiration blog media and press that's all really great to the trade about us contact shipping you know you can kind of get it right at the top what she does now I think this is a little like sometimes it's better to it's hard because and I it's hard to put words on the picture and so especially when you have more than one picture and these are great pictures, but um, people can't really read that very well. So I kind of like to, and oh, and then it's like, if I, I do this with my son or people that are my team, I say, well, I, could you move that, could you move those words over a little bit off the, on the picture? And he has to remind me every time, it's going to look different on my computer which is 27 inches than anybody else's computer, and when you go to mobile responsive, it moves all over the place. So you think, you think you've, you're, you're a new designer, you think you're putting your words in just the right spot on the website, and then doggone it, you see it on a different size, and it's right over the person's face or something. So it's, that's why a lot of times you see the images a little grayed out with the words on top of them so that they pop off, you know, with the words, but then you have a dark image or a light image and, you know, if it's a slider, and that's what I'm saying, it's so hard, like nobody is going to sit here and watch through all of your slider images, and so they would, if I came to this screen, I wouldn't know you had free shipping because I wouldn't be waiting around, I'd be going immediately down. Some, and you might also need a, a down thing showing that you have more because that's one of the essential things. People will scroll as long as they think there's more. And there's some people that just don't get it. So, um, so you need to be able to um, have something that shows that there's more or have it be like that they peek through, you know, that the next thing peeks through. Like on my computer, I'm sure this would, would peek through. So I would say, I mean, she's got, like the salmon people, she's got great pictures. But for a homepage picture, which one would you guys say? The first one, right? And, and if I, I think instead of free shipping, I'd put, uh, you know, you've got really um, eclectic, high-end you know, amazing it, uh, products. And so I would think of some word that, that when that's on there, it's da-da-da, you know, something that describes you, and then you could put free shipping somewhere. That's important, because, especially when you're selling heavy things. But for your prices, they probably go, I hope their <laughs> shipping is included. Judy? Yep. Yeah, or make the photo like make the photo like with a little grayed out thing, but that you know, but not too much because if it's a great photo, you know, to do that it's like oh, but I like the way the photo pops. But you have to work with it to find out just that that right sweet spot where your words still show up on devices of different size. So it may be the best shot that we like. Well, this one is a little more consistent, but still it's difficult because then if you put if you put the words white, anyway, you have to fiddle with it. It's it's a difficult thing, but. Uh, everybody. So, if you have a slider, it's very precious. 
Would do when when you're designing the site, do a um, why slow or you know do a there's a couple of um, of um, speed test, pingdom, and those give you um, some some indication of what your how how your site's performing. Uh huh. That's right. It does, and um, yeah. So, but 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 see, you don't want to, the and the call to action, shipping and terms. Does that go to your shipping and terms page? Well, uh, I don't know, but I wouldn't want to lose them from the top, you know, from right at the top with sending them to your shipping and terms page. I would want them to go down. So, again, I'd say go down and see some of the other things you have. Um, you know, to start looking at the other other items, and um, yeah, and then you're you're right here. Your you sh could have a call to action like buy products now or buy or or you know shop now. This could say shop now. Um, just do the salmon. They've got a terrible URL. Seafood. <laughs> oh, now I probably spelled something. Alaska salmon. That's right. So this is an e-commerce site. Um, and it could come up faster. Maybe it's, I'm going to blame it on the, um, on the internet. Uh, however, it should pop right up. And then Captain Tony, and here's, here's this site. Uh, buy your wild Alaska salmon or buy your salmon now. There's a choice. Um, we didn't put this as one of his logos. He wanted up here, but if we had put that there, you can't even read wild Alaska salmon and seafood company. So we did have another one that we put in the header. And then... And then from caught to bought, Captain Tony's crew does it all. This is why you would want to use it. You, they catch the fish, they deliver it, they clean and fillet, and they package and freeze it all themselves. So it's in the freezer within like six hours versus a fisherman taking their catch and giving it to a commercial processing firm that leaves it around, sitting around for a week before they ever get to it. And then a little bit of subliminal thing going on to kind of put you in the frame that they're really in Alaska and buy our wild Alaska salmon and seafood and then we have some teaser products and then see more and then Captain Tony's all over the site he was going to have it do Captain Tony catches the fish Captain Tony delivers it to the store I'm like that sounds like you're a one-man band of fishing you know you don't do it all your crew does it but anyway it's been very effective people stay on this site so that's a good example of, um, of how to tell the story, tell his story, and give him a little more reason to be interested. Um, let's see. Um, OK, we're going to go to, and I don't have a, cl a clock. Is there any way of telling what time it is? Oh, shoot. And I'm going to be in the happiness room the rest of the day, practically. Um, let's see. Gentlejourneybirthing.com. Whose site is this? Okay, stand up and tell us what your site is for. Um, Birthing.com. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing it right. Burb, yeah. I should have had somebody do this part for me. B-I-R-T-H. Birthing.com. Let's see. 
Okay, let's see. So, uh, oh, good. I was getting ready to like, but I'll give you that since mine came up so slow for Captain Tony. Okay. So this is just a background. Oh, and it's going to go all, all the way down, no? Okay. So, Sue, what would you say? Well, um, the logo is small. I'm going to say that. Um, the, the script. I, I think the thing that struck me, I mean, I'm, the, the big chunk of type on the front, um, I, don't, I don't think anybody's going to read the wall to wall justified type. I think if you have your header, You've got your little tagline, like subhead saying what kind of explaining. I would say you just need a few lines. And then if you want to read them into the site, I mean, do you agree, Judy? Just do a read more. Or maybe, you know, read them in, inside, take them deeper inside, because that's a, a big expectation to ask people to read that kind of type. And I personally, I don't know how many other designers here feel, but I'm not a lover of justified type because I think it's very unnatural. I think it's great for lawyers. I think that this is centered, actually. Uh, let's justify the side to side. It appears centered. Thanks, Sue. Uh, and I heard something over here. A picture. Oh, my God. I was expecting to see something that was... You know, tugged at my heartstrings. What, this little picture? Yeah, I'd say a big picture. And it, it has to, like, of a pregnant woman, not one in the birthing suite. I don't want to see her belly. I'm sorry, that's not so appealing. Yeah, we, we put that on the inside picture. We've all been there. But, you know, it's like I did a site for some, a dog rescue organization in, in uh, Savannah. And we had, we found, we worked really hard to find sad dogs that weren't Melissa Etheridge sad, that made you run from the room and, oh my God, I can't watch that. But some, a dog that's like looking at you like, would you take me home? And so you have to find that, that people love pictures of people and faces and, you know, that, that something, an image, a great image that says, you know, this is, a, a, this is a great relationship because that's kind of what you're offering is this to be that relationship through the pregnancy and beyond. But... Um, a font's kind of light. It's that gray font syndrome. Uh, the center type would be hard to read. Maybe flush up might be easier. Yeah, I, I, pers per, I, one of my pet peeves is centered type. I really hate it unless there's a really good reason for it. Flush right. I know people don't think that that's a good thing. I'd put the calendar on the inside. I, yeah, you're not telling your. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Yeah, there's too much, like, it's not, you know, people scan, and so you can't, you have to be really careful about what you give them, and, and feed it to them in little bites, so that you keep, oh, what's next? You know how you're dying to see the next, the next scandal that comes on, or, or, you know, Downton Abbey. I mean, you know, leave them, like, oh, now what? Now what? Now what? Not like, oh! I, you know, God, that's asking a lot, you know, or people ask, people expect you to like buy now when, um, or, you know, call me for an appointment in the first header when mm, I don't even know who you are. So you have to kind of figure that and play around with, I kind of call these layers. So figure what your layers need to be and, um, and, Let's see, cake mix.
doctor.com. Figure out what your layers need to be to tell the story with words and visuals. And an example, it's not babies, birthing babies, but it's making cakes, similar. Um, <laughs> so it's a great picture, right? You want to lick the bowl and put on your favorite apron, plug in the mixer, get ready to bake in some memories. I didn't make that up, she did. Um, but I was glad she did, because it was nice. Uh, here's what she offers. She's got some new cake mixes. Here's her story, you know, from busy mom to cake mix doctor. You know who she is. You feel connected. This is, like, you should see this picture big. I think we all gained five pounds because all of us in the office wanted to start baking cake or eating cake um, doing this site. <laughs> so there are her cake mixes and then some recipes. So, you know, you are, you know, if you've made it down here, you're really pretty connected, like you're interested. And there's lots of ways for you to, you know, get, find them in the stores um, and to go on to the other pages, you know, about the mix, about, but you, it's enough. If I just, it's enough. Yeah, that coconut cake. <laughs> yeah, you see what I mean? Highland Bakery's coconut cake looks like, it tastes like that looks. Um, so anyway, that's, um, that's about telling the story. So how, what time is it now? <laughs> Quarter of? Okay, I can, five more minutes, good. When you went down that page, there was a slider, but I already invested enough to stay and watch it. You know, but it's not already gone down that far. Yeah, and it doesn't matter, this slider, yeah, but this slider doesn't, see, this slider is, is eye candy. And it's okay to have eye candy there because it doesn't matter if you saw the sugar cookie picture. It, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, that's fine, but if you didn't see the sugar cookie picture, but see, if you didn't see the coconut cake picture, you would be losing out, wouldn't you? Did you, that is the, is the money shot. So wh why would you want to see those stupid cookies? <laughs> yeah. No, because you just saw this. You just saw this, and even though I'm saying it's eye candy, this is the shot. This is the shot that if that was her top, why would she want those other ones to slide? Because I guarantee hero images are hard. You, they have to be epic. You're wasting your time if somebody comes to the site and it, they see one of the, the lesser ones. Why not keep your best one and, and really optimize your font on your text on it and then save the other ones for once you've got them invested to keep going because if you lose them right away and Melissa um, Eggleston is here I think I can't remember here what, what's your last name Melissa Eggleston she did a, a great usability uh, talk up in Asheville last at uh, the word camp last year and you know she says people actually get angry when they go to a site and the homepage image is gone that they loved. And it would be kind of like that, that coconut cake. You know, if you like that coconut cake, it was working for you. And somebody says, well, I, I want to change my photos out every two months. Well, it's hard to find an epic photograph. And so why kill yourself? And as designer, who, who knows how hard that is, yeah? You know, it's hard to find. People come to you and they want one of these very visual sites and they have no images. And they do something like accounting. You know, that it's not great on the, you know, images. And it's all stock photos, which is a whole other. Yeah, and stock photos, there's ways of dealing with stock photos. Besides, don't find one. I mean, you have to really, really look, but you can. And sometimes I've taken stock photos and put my client in them. Work you know, I've done things, but mostly those, you've got to find a stock photo that doesn't have everybody looking like they're in black suits and, and 22. 
You know, it's like with real people. So stock photos are hard um, when they're people. And that's, you, you know, anyway, that's another talk. But so, you know, those are, you know, and oh, taking somebody's slider away is no easy thing. So there are several websites that talk about sliders no more, or Melissa would know the name of it, I forget, but where you can say to your client, because you have to, people come to you with all sorts of strange requests, and you have to have, it's your job to stay up on what new usability um, features are, you know, and what people, what drives people away. And then if you do that, you're talking with research rather than, well, I liked it better the other way. That's not going to convince somebody, but it's, it's our job. Should I use acarousel.com? Should I use acarousel.com? And that's, that's your tip for the day that you can use all the time. So I'm not saying that if, if they really don't matter and if it's a small slider, uh, you know, if, but... I, yeah, why do it if you're losing your best shot? Um, so that's that's kind of uh, it for right now. And I'll be in the happiness room later. If you like, I had a line out the door in Orlando for several hours. But I, you know, I'd be glad to help you. And there are other people in there that can help you. Um, so you know, kind of look at your site and give you a few pointers. Because it doesn't matter if you have the snazziest plugins and, and great membership site, you know, functionality. If you're losing them right away, then what, you know, why go any further? So, thank you.